جاء رجل إلى عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه يشكو عقوق ابنه فأحضر عمر ابنه فقال له ألم تعلم أن لي أبيك حق عليك فقال الولد يا أمير المؤمنين وهل الولد حق على أبيه فقال عمر بلى قال وما هي يا أمير المؤمنين فقال عمر أن ينتقي أمة يعني يختار له أم أم صالحة ويسمي لا يسميه باسم صالح ويعلمه من كتاب الله فقال الولد يا أمير المؤمنين إن أبي لم يفعل شيء من ذلك أما أمي فكانت مجوسيا وأما اسم فسماتني خنفسا ولم يعلمني حرف من كتاب الله فقال عمر لهذا الأب وهذا الوالد إنك جئت إلي تشكو عقوق ابنك وقد أققت إليه قبل أن يعقبك يعقبك وأسدت إليه قبل أن أساء إليك عمر رضي الله عنه so we know Umar was, was, was very rigid when it came to following Islam to the T very very strict when it came to that he cut no corners and he never bit his tongue even with the Prophet sallallahu he never bit his tongue on this occasion, a man came to Umar to complain about the disobedience of his son. That his son, his son was not being dutiful to him as a parent, not giving him his right as a parent. So Umar called the son. And this is, subhanAllah, this is another indication or another incident wherein we can see Islamic counseling, family counseling. Today we have marriage and family counseling. But this happened even during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, the Sahaba and the generations all the way up until today. There has always been counseling in Islam. Umar brought the son and the father there and the Umar turned to the son and said, don't you know that your father has rights over you? The son asked Umar, he said, O leader of the believers, doesn't the son have rights over his father? Doesn't the son have rights over his father? And Umar he said, of course he does. The son said, so Umar, what, is the right, what are the rights of the son over the father? Umar he said that he chooses, number one, he chooses for him a good mother. This is before the child is even born. Your child, your children that are in your loins, that are in your scrotum, those sperm cells, those are your children. And they have a right over you even before they are brought out into this world. SubhanAllah. Uh, Islam has a very beautiful way of showing us how valuable, how important something is by holding us accountable for it. Even though we may not see the, the merit or the value in it, but the fact that we are held accountable if we neglect it shows how valuable and how important it is in Islam. That your children have a right over you even before they are exited into this world by you choosing for them a righteous mother. As the Prophet Sallallahu he said to the Sahaba, فَاخْتَارُ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مَكَانْ صَالِحْ لِمَائِكُمْ That you choose a righteous place to place your semen. A righteous place to place your semen. Because these are your children. These are children that have rights over you even before they are brought into this world. He says, so Umar said, that the right of the child over the father is that number one, you choose a righteous mother for them. Number two, is that, the, that he gives you a good name. That the father gives the child a good name. As the scholars, they say, كُلُّ مُسَمَّ لَهُ نَصِيبُ مِنْ اسْمِ that every person has a share or a portion of his name. Every person, Wallah Azim, and you see that. People who have certain names, they have qualities and characteristics that reflect those names. 
which is why the Prophet ﷺ would change the name of certain of companions. One companion, his name was Sa'ab, which means difficult. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Anta Sahal, you are easygoing. Changing your name from Sa'ab to Sahal to, to easygoing. And the man said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, my, my parents gave me that name. I want to honor the name that my parents gave me. The Prophet ﷺ said, Anta wa shatnuk. Then, you know, carry on if that's what you choose. And so his grandchild said that difficulty has been in our family for generations. If my grandfather would have just changed his name like the Prophet Sallallahu it encouraged him to do because every person has a share or portion of his name. So we should choose good names for our children. And thirdly, he said he is to teach his son <coughs> the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Teach him from the book of Allah, the Quran. The son said to Umar, O Amir al Mu'minin, O leader of the believers, my father has never done any of that. My father has never done any of that. He said, As for my mother, my mother was a Jews, my mother was a, you know, an idol worshiper. You know, she wasn't righteous, she was an idolater. He said, As for my name, she named me Khunfasa, which means beetle, a bug. That's, that's what she named him. He said, and as for the book of Allah, my father never taught me, never taught me one letter from the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. How are you coming to Umar to complain about your child when you have done your child the greatest injustice? The greatest injustice. This is a classic case of the pot calling the kettle black. You've done your child the greatest injustice. So Umar turned to the father and he said to him, you came to me to complain about the disobedience of your son towards you. He said, but you have been undutiful to your child before he was ever undutiful to you. And you did him an injustice before he ever did you any injustice. SubhanAllah. How do you come and complain calling for your haq when you never gave the child his haq? Teach your children from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about how many parents today who send their children to Islamic school. Islamic school is raising your children. We spend very little time with our children. Think about how much you have actually taught your child from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallah well, alaleem, they are parents. And this is not just for you brothers that are sitting here now. But for the people who will listen to this lecture later on, think about how many children you have in your home, how many children you've raised, and you have never taught them one surah from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Fatiha. How many children can't even recite Al-Fatiha properly? And the parents, you know, have so many other things. And mashallah, they have iPads, they have cell phones, they have their own room, they have so many other amenities that the dunya can offer but the very thing that will save their life, you neglected to give them. And that was the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guidance. And the Prophet sallallahu said in ending, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ اسْتَرْعَاهُ اللَّهُ رَعِيَّةٍ ثُمَّ لَمْ يُحُدْحَ بِالنَّصِيحَةٍ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ قَالَ يَمُوتُ يَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَهُوَ غَاشٍ لِي رَعِيَّتِهِ إِلَّا لَمْ يَجِدْ رَائِحَةِ الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet sallallahu said that there is no servant who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him responsible for something and then he neglects or fails to fulfill that responsibility except that he will not smell the fragrance of paradise. And included in that is the rights of the child. Your child, your children have rights. We tend to always consider our rights over our children, but your children have rights over you as well. والله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله على نبي محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليم كثيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته